Hey, hey guys, what's up? Felix here, and I have been meaning to like give you guys more content and stuff, but of course, uh, academics and, and such have been giving me a bit of like delays. So, yeah, I'm here to bring you guys uh, episode four uh, for the forum this season, and because I actually really want to talk about it, I was actually thinking a bit about it in my head, so. I was like, hmm, why not talk about it? Because I just recently watched Chapter 5 of Ruby, which was released about two days ago uh, publicly. So now everyone kind of knows about it. So I was like, all right, I might as well just talk about the chapter before it too, or like right now, because then it'd be much better and then I can prepare for the next one uh, when the time comes. So probably in a couple of days. But yeah, uh, schoolwork and stuff, it's kind of hard to... Um, putting content here and there. But anyway, uh, let's get down to what I wanted to be talking about. So, chapter 4 of uh, Ruby Volume 4 is none other than called Family. And uh, I'm gonna get to why it's called that in a bit. So, the very beginning of uh, this, uh, this chapter is actually pretty intriguing. I feel like a lot of theory crafters probably poked at this a lot, but um, the farm boy, which I had mentioned in like chapter two and even I think it was just chapter two um he was just working a lot of people were theorizing oh yeah maybe that's spring but then we realized that um, the storm boy was just working just very casually uh, with some tools he goes back to the barn and then he looks in this mirror and like straight out of the blue he hears professor Osmond's voice and then that literally like scares the living heck out of him and then it cuts that part right there so now we have either a very very interesting connection between him and Osmond because we actually don't know what happened to him so yeah that's gonna leave on the air because now we don't it's very curious so yeah I was kind of like hmm I don't really know where that's gonna lead but we know for sure Osmond is somewhere anyway um Next, we uh, shift over to Yang, and it's kind of like in this dream sequence, and Yang is re-experiencing re what happened uh, at the Fall of Beacon. <clears throat> so, as you guys probably all already know, uh, during the Fall of Beacon, uh, Yang lost one of her arms, because Adam, you know, cut it off. So then, um, she was experiencing that again, and she was getting really frightened, and of course it completely shocked her. And then, yeah, so that was very curious. We know um, for a fact that she was incredibly damaged by all those events that happened. So yeah, it's pretty, uh, pretty depressing. Anyway, uh, after that, Yang wakes up and she hears chatter uh, in the house. And of course it's on the first floor. And she walks down and she sees Tai Yang talking with Professor Port and Professor Ublek. Uh, they happened to, walk, to come by and visit. And Tai Yang was chatting with them. It seemed like they were actually having a pretty good time, like just joking around and stuff. But they did say that Beacon, as of right now, is currently being rebuilt. So that just re leaves me, of course, thinking and questioning about Glinda because we don't actually know what happened to her. She might have just ran off too. So, yeah. Um, tai Yang seems to be pretty good friends with Port and Ublek. And then, after that, um, Yang comes into the kitchen, and then she wants to like, or she was very quiet, of course, because, you know, she's still thinking and trying to, like, stay sane after all the stuff that happened. And then, after that, uh, there's this one sequence where Taiyang says something, like, honestly something very, very, like, mean to Yang, but then Yang casually takes it as a joke, but everybody's just like, the whole room just goes quiet. Everybody's just like, whoa, whoa, man. Take it easy, man. <laughs> like, chill out, dude. So, yeah, that was, like, very unexpected of Taiyang. I didn't honestly think he would say something like that. And then, um, that was basically it for 
Yang's whole part. And now we're gonna shift to something a little more interesting. So after this, it shows Ranger, and you go. They're heading towards their next town. And it shifts all the way up to this cliff, like a very tall cliff. And on the cliff, you see Crow. And Crow is there, and he kills this uh, Beowulf just like right on the spot. And then like Ruby and them had mentioned, oh yeah, it's like it seems like we haven't ran into any trouble yet. And then we don't really realize the fact that Crow has been secretly been protecting them the whole time from all these probably all these other unnecessary grips, so it's like, whoa, Crow's looking out. But then, <laughs> it's funny, kind of funny, because like he just, he just kind of huffs, look, huh, and then he just kind of leaves from there. And then, because he knows he's been doing all the work. And then, um, after this, now we're going to probably get to the most interesting part of the whole thing. Um, Crow goes to the same bar that he's been going to for a while. It's kind of funny and kind of cute because there's this waitress in like a Chinese dress that comes by and she hooks up Crow with like one of the best or some like top quality alcohol there because she knows him and he knows her, I believe. And then um, after that, the waitress tells Crow that someone wants to see him someone with red eyes and that probably keys into a lot of things here uh, Crow walks up the stairs and guess who's there? Raven's there and man oh man I've been waiting for Raven to come back for so long she is honestly one of my favorite heroines and characters of the show but the thing that's really sad though is that um, we find out that Raven is the leader of a clan and it turns out Crow didn't want to be like any part of it, and that keeps me thinking that I'll never fail as a white fang, but I don't think so, because the organization's different, the symbolism's different, so I don't really know for sure. And then, um, yeah, Raven acts very, very um, dominant, like, she's like, okay, I'm just gonna do what I want. You don't tell me what to do. That's kind of sad though, because, you know, Yang is uh, Raven's daughter, but then she doesn't really care about anything that happened to her, and she's in like such a terrible state right now. So, yeah, it's pretty bittersweet, but nonetheless, I still actually really like her. So, yeah, it's kind of like I love you, but I hate you, but I love you. It's like this back and forth thing. So, yeah, it kind of sucks because now I feel really scared about Raven because. She's put herself in such a gray position, like it's not black or white, it's just like so in the middle. It's like I don't know what to think of you, but I still really like you. But they get but then again you aren't doing all these things that aren't morally right. So it's like, uh what do I what do I like how do I how am I supposed to feel about this? So in the end, um it's actually about it. Um the chapter within itself is really quite short. So Anyway, you guys, as usual, I'd love to hear what you thought about it. Um, I've been just doing the series as a treat for myself because I actually really love showcasing my thoughts for each chapter. Even though this series isn't really like the key thing or like the key popular um, type of content for this channel, but yet I'm still gonna keep consistently doing because I really have a lot of fun doing it. So, anyway, you guys. Hope to see you again, stay honest, and I will see you all next time. Bye.